This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014, an interview with Julian Mietelberg, CEO at Bands in Town. DMT's coverage of South by Southwest is brought to you by Omniphone, the leading B2B cloud music provider powering global music services including Sony Music Unlimited, Guvera, Rara and Sirius XM. Find out more on Omniphone.com and by Music Graph, the world's first knowledge engine for music, available as a consumer app and as a graph API for developers. Check out MusicGraph.com or Developer.MusicGraph.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends coverage of South by Southwest 2014 and it's a real pleasure to be here with Julian Mittelberg, the CEO of the company Bands in Town. So hi Julian, thanks for joining me, how's it going? Great, great, about you? Uh, great, it's uh, the first day that I can actually shoot properly on the, on the balcony. I love this, bal this balcony but uh, it's been rainy and then it's been cold and uh, this is the first true, day where we can uh, shoot here. Beautiful. So uh, tell me all about Bands in Town, I'm sure the majority of the audience will be familiar with the company already but just in case let's give a quick overview of the company. Well, uh, Bands in Town, uh, at least for fans, uh, is uh, today the largest uh, concert discovery app uh, in the world. It basically um, helps fans never miss their favorite artist uh, gigs, you know, and that's one of the big problems of the industry is a lot of people don't know that their favorite bands are coming in town yeah. and they miss their show and we're trying to solve that problem. Sure, absolutely. And so uh, when the company start out, uh, it's, it's quite a long history, right? So the company actually started yeah, about three years ago in uh, uh, San Diego uh, and uh, uh, founded by, you know, four young people. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we uh, teamed up about a couple of years ago uh, with uh, our company Selfish uh, to uh, accelerate that product. Uh, it started actually originally f to be a platform for artists to help them better promote their tour dates and then we launched a um, consumer product to help also fans never miss a show. And fast forward, you know, uh, today uh, we're about to announce that we passed 10 million concert goers using the app. Wow, that's, yeah. a, that's a lot of concerts. So it's a very, yeah, lot of concerts, a lot of people, yes. Yeah, that's great. I think we said that aggregated our, uh, our users uh, combined about a million hours of, uh, you know, concerts every week. So that's pretty big. <laughs> That's huge. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the fan-facing services first, and then we're going to delve into the artist services and, and the APIs and all that. So, uh, or, or, you know, if, if, if a user wants to use uh, uh, either the, the, the app or the company, what, what happens? Well, where do they go? So uh, what we do is uh, it's quite simple. The first thing we do is we try to know uh, the kind of music you like. You know, so we look at your, if you download the app, you look at your iTunes library, we look at your, what you listen to on Spotify or on Deezer, what you thumbs up on Pandora, uh, or what you like on Facebook, or what you follow on, on Twitter. And based on that, we have an algorithm that makes you track uh, uh, a number of artists. We think, you know, if you listen to a, a track for a number of times, then we think, oh, you like the artist, so we make you track this artist in Benzin Town. Once you track an artist in Benzin Town, you'll always be notified when they come to where you live. So the way it works is we have your we have your music profile. We also have the largest database of events, upcoming events in the world. We cross that. We know where you live, and when the artist just announced a show that is coming to your town, then we we'll let you know, and we we'll let you know via mobile notification, via Facebook app, or via email. So you are you are on all those platforms, right? Correct. Perfect. Uh, both iOS and Android. iOS, Android, Facebook app, voilà. and uh, on the web. Awesome. So, uh, talking about the band services, that you, you said that was the initial focus of the company. So, uh, what have you got in store for artists on that front? So, originally, the way it started is that uh, you know artists on Facebook were doing having difficulties to display their tour dates. They didn't know where to put the tour dates. You had a feed. Uh, they had to post something. They had to create a Facebook event linked to the right ticketing company, the event, and the venue. So, we just basically built a solution to do it automatically for them. It saved them a lot of time then we build an engine to post on their behalf so that you know if they don't remember how to post they could post we could post for them uh, geotargeting to the right people at the right time and they started to use us as a way to better display and promote tour dates on Facebook then Twitter then we built a very efficient widget that they can display on their website and so how's uh, how's the artist adoption of it and uh, uh, what is their reaction also to having a tool that allows them to do that so uh, we've been very surprised uh, uh, when Ben Bands in town join us, uh, they had about 15,000 uh, artists. Uh, we just passed 200,000 artists using uh, this uh, part of our application. About 65% of touring artists are now using uh, Bands in town. So we have a pretty high penetration of that, awesome. of that industry. 
And, uh, and so looking at the monetization side uh, on, on both fronts, so uh, on the uh, fan side, is it uh, more uh, driven by uh, affiliate sales of, of tickets or uh, what's the main draw there? So the, uh, uh, today, the main driver of monetization is actually to start offering promoters of shows a way to better promote their show Great. to users, uh, uh, much more than affiliation from uh, ticketing. We, we do send about 3 million people a month buying tickets, that's a lot, but you know the revenue stream from affiliation is not that great. Now, on the other hand, because we know exactly what our users like and where they live, uh, then we tell uh, promoters you can actually have a bigger show of voice and create a dedica dedicated campaign to promote your tour yeah. to our fans, and that's becoming very popular. That's awesome. And on the artist front, do you provide any premium services uh, for them? No, we think that uh, you know we we rather just keep it you know free. That's free. Great. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, a uh, lot so of them companies that are monetizing an artist on that front. So I know. know, and I think that you know we have so many of them now. Yes, we have you know 50% of the top 40 artists, uh, you know, billboard artists, but we also have a long, long tail of small artists. We don't think necessarily they have the resources to uh, to pay. So we rather just you know. Uh, offer that service for free and actually on the other hand you know try to monetize with people with money promoters or That's brands great. so brands also are starting to be interested about the service a lot of brands that are involved in you know uh, touring and, and sponsoring uh, would like to see more eyeballs on digital and we think we can be offering that for them. So that's what we start to do. That's awesome. And the company uh, is uh, really uh, very much involved in the, in the big data conversation around music. And you are uh, also an early uh, you know, provider of, uh, of uh, API access to, to, to the service as well and to your data. So uh, how have you seen that space evolve over the last uh, uh, couple of years? And uh, uh, are, you, are you surprised by how prominent the conversations around the usage of APIs have become today? So two things you're saying, big data and API. Let's start with the API. We, we've been offering the API uh, for since the beginning. Uh, the reason why is because in our mission to make sure that artists promote, the, you know, can reach as many fans as possible, you know, we cannot do it just by ourselves. So we're offering other services a chance to also display the store dates. If you use uh, Shazam, for example, when you Shazam a song and you have a list of options including tickets, that's uh, using our API, SoundHound, Reverb Nation, a band page is using a, you know, a large uh, part of our um, uh, database as well. So sure. we're trying to offer everybody a way uh, to, uh, to promote uh, artists. Oh, um, Nokia now, all around the world, uh, when you use their music services and you have Geek Finder, this is also using uh, 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 Benzin Town. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, uh, on that front, uh, uh, how do you see that moving forward? I, I know that a lot of companies are looking at uh, other APIs as a potential uh, extra source of income. Are, are you monetizing the API right now? No. I think that for us, it's really a distribution play. It's Great. to say to the artist, you're going to be everywhere. And uh, to make that happen, we're going to give everybody an, an opportunity to display your tour dates. Uh, it's key to understand that we're really displaying artist tour dates. Uh, we have a big catalog of events, but we always try to have all those tour dates validated by the artists so they can be official and then distribute them. Yeah. So that's where today, that's where we're seeing it. It's a free API, anybody can use it. Uh, uh, and I don't think I see a, in the near future a way to monetize it. That's now great. on the big data side, um, uh, it's a very hard subject, but we actually started with this. The only way we could really do uh, an efficient um, product for our consumers is to be able to make it uh, to use big data to make it very simple. I like yeah. to say I use big data to make a very simple service. You receive a very targeted email or notification to tell you your artist is coming in town. To be able to do that, I have to go through all your music library many times. I have to go through all my uh, you know, uh, event catalog, filter, and then give you the results. So that's the yeah. way we actually right now using big data. Is to, big data is to provide a simple service. The second thing we're doing now is also to look at the way people behave when they go to show, when they post content, where you know reviews of the show, and try to also now go back to the artists and tell them, hey, maybe we have information that allows you to better route your tour. Yeah. You know, use it. So we're opening that to uh, touring management and, and artists for them to start to use that to better prepare the next tour. Absolutely. That's, that's great. And so uh, you were talking about uh, some interesting uh, things happening on the search side and SEO. So uh, what kind of work have you been doing lately on that front? Well, it's, it's very new. Uh, but uh, uh, last night, um, uh, Google made, made an announcement saying that uh, they were now adding uh, tour dates to their graph. 
And uh, the way they do it is they, uh, when they crawl a artist um, uh, uh, website and they actually uh, uh, bump into our widget that we offer all artists to place, they will consider this content as uh, the official tour dates of the artist. Great. And when you search the artist's name on Google and you see the you know the Google window where they list aggregate all this uh, music information, yeah. you will see those dates also displayed. So now the artist through Benzin Down can also control the first dates that are shown on uh, Google search results. That's awesome and it's good to see Google doing uh, taking some more steps At in last. To helping uh, yes. artists because yes. uh, I was a medium in a very heated session that I moderated there uh, where Google got some schlock because of, of uh, some of the things that they were doing and the fact that we're not helping musicians enough so uh, definitely yes. I think yes. that that puts some salt about time. In, yeah, I agree. I agree. definitely about time and so you know looking forward uh, what, are, what are you really excited about uh, when it comes to the company and its future development uh, what can you see for the next 12 months so uh, two areas of uh, uh, um, I think um, improvement and innovation on the on the artist side uh, we're gonna do something very interesting in the next I would say you know months months and a half is for the first time we're gonna allow artists to communicate with our users so right. on, on one hand we have 200,000 artists on the other hand we have 10 million concert goers the only way they communicate is when we notify users when the artist is coming in town that's the only sure. that only channel we're gonna open a new channel where artists actually can communicate directly with their fans. That's For example, uh, you know, if uh, you have, you know, a thousand fans that are RSVP to a show and you want to say, hey, you know, get excited, you know, in three hours I'm there, get ready, and you want only to target those people, those artists will be able to use our platform to reach them out, well, to reach out to them. So that's the first thing we're doing is opening, you know, communication channel between artists and uh, uh, concert goers. Yeah. On the fan side, uh, in Q2, we're going to release a new version of our mobile app, which is going to add a um, stronger uh, social layer to the app. Uh, we're adding um, some features where you're going to be able to see uh, what your friends are doing, when they're tracking an artist, when they're going to a show, the kind of photos and videos they post about a show, other friends, friends of friends, and try to artists also post, and try to have a destination where we can start to aggregate everything happening in Benzin Town around one artist. Today you have to go, it's very hard to get there at yeah. one place, that's where we're going to go. It's uh, really crazy being here in the States because you talk to artists and uh, you, you really uh, get to understand the uh, hugeness of the US when it comes to the concert market because yes. uh, you know I talked to uh, artists in the UK and yeah they can do a tour occasionally but uh, it's gonna be a tour of the usual you know 10 15 20 destinations but uh, here in the US you know you can be on the road for a year and still not have covered Perfect. the whole country so I guess an app like yours is really it comes it into its own when you have this large long tours and you have to you know it's impossible to manage your fans everywhere you have to really try and, uh, and have some sort of automated process to do that for absolutely. you absolutely <laughs> you're absolutely right so i think on on the artist side is true but also on the fan side you know since touring is now becoming the you know the biggest revenue stream for artists you have more and more artists touring it's not less and less and, and longer and longer so uh, how can you help um, fans navigate to yeah. that. Uh, of course, number one is to identify who they like and tell them who's coming. We also are uh, 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 now using a very solid uh, recommendation engine where if you live in a smaller city, you may not yeah. have your favorite artist coming, but we still want to tell you similar artists coming that we think you're going to like. And actually, um, in our last survey, we found something very interesting. Uh, about 20% of our users have been to a show of an artist they didn't know before Benz in Town recommended them. Wow. It's very impressive. So we talk about music discovery, we're now launching concert discovery. And those are people that are spending 20, 40 bucks yeah. to see someone they didn't know before because we recommended it. So it's also a very interesting new way of, you know, going to a show. That's great. And on the other side of things, are you also looking at uh, uh, letting artists know where they should go? If, if, you can, if you can notice that, you know, you got like 2,000 fans in this random place that you maybe you would never think about touring. Yeah, good question. We uh, so we have um, we have a feature we're adding into our consumer app. It's called Play My City. So if you're a fan of an artist and you see the tour just announced and you don't see your city, you know, listing on the tour, uh, you have a function now that allows you to say, "I want the artist to come to me." Awesome. And as we start to aggregate this data, we're going to share that with the artist so that the next time or even during the tour, they can even you know maybe add a date to a date. specific place. Perfect. And that's where big data again may be useful for uh, for artists. Great. And Bands in Town is available world worldwide. 
So Benzin Sand is worldwide. Yep. Uh, it's only in English right now, but you know, I think by the end of the year it will be localized. Our biggest markets are uh, US, uh, Canada, UK, uh, Australia, Germany, uh, France, and uh, Brazil, believe it or not. So it's awesome. very, very spread out. That's yes. perfect. Well, Julian, it's a real pleasure. And uh, again, it's bandsintown.com. Yes. And you can also follow the company. I'm sure it's at Bands in Town, I would imagine. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for listening to the coverage of uh, Digital Music Trends at South by Southwest 2014. You can see the city behind me in all its glory. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week and until uh, next time.